Hello and welcome to another episode of Journey to the Rise. I'm your host, Lucretia. In today's episode, we welcome swimsuit designer Terry Lynn of Hella TL Designs. What does a woman do when she's informed her senior year in college her designs are too risque for a fashion show? She goes home, makes a bunch of suits, and forges her own path. Terry Lynn found her way to creating her own brand, Hella TL. A lot of women struggle with finding the right fit with their swimsuit. Terry Lynn works with her clients to help them feel comfortable and empowered in their swimwear. We also get into the conversation about the benefits that come when you order a custom suit versus buying something off the rack. In this conversation with Terry Lynn, we get a great insight on what it's like to be a swimsuit designer. So let's dive in. Please welcome my guest, Terry Lynn. Shopping for a swimsuit can be incredibly daunting, and we all want to look and feel good in our swimsuits, yet there are so many variables to finding the right fit. And today, we get to talk to a woman who is probably part mermaid, along with being a very intelligent businesswoman and designer and awesome mama and awesome everything. And I'm so excited to have the one and only from Hella TL, Terry Lynn, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely happy to be here. <laughs> Woohoo! So I just want to start off in the beginning. Where did you grow up? Well, I have not fallen far. I grew up in Lebanon, Tennessee, and I'm just here in Middle Tennessee now. So I am a purebred Tennessee. Nice. <laughs> That's amazing, which explains why you're so, so incredibly sweet. Tennesseans are just the nicest, genuine nicest people. Well, thank you. <laughs> so was there anything about like within your family or your childhood that kind of shaped you for who you are today? Absolutely. Um, on my dad's side, well, actually both sides of the family, they're t full, just full of creatives. My grandmother, um, she was super creative and she got me my first sewing machine when I was 12 and I was a girly girl. So I had Barbies and dolls and she was always creating uh, she was an avid doll collector so there was always wow. tons of antique lace and antique fabrics and she just let me go wild and like didn't put any boundaries and so I'd create a lot of things when I was young and um, my dad was super creative like we would go to Hobby Lobby and just pick out watercolor paint brushes and watercolors and like just do whatever like there was always wow. a different activity we would be working on and he was a drummer so like I'd you know play guitar and I took violin lessons so there is always something different and creative yeah. going on in our house so what an amazing childhood how incredibly fun I want to go with someone and pick out some watercolors yeah, it was a lot of fun. Like, just crazy. Wow. So after high school, where did life take you? Well, I um, applied to go to MTSU. Didn't really know what I was going to do. I took the first year undeclared to kind of get my feet wet and see what I could do. And I, I met with some advisors. And as it turns out, I was really interested in the apparel industry and they showed me lots of places around the area that I could get a job at. And I was like, I could do this. Absolutely. So I um, declared my major as apparel design and minored oh, in wow. entertainment arts design as well. Oh, wow. So is that when your interest in designing clothes began for you was in college? Um, sort of. In high school, I used to play in a band and a lot of times I would be trying to like jazz up my clothes a little bit. So <laughs> I would, you know, enhance the hips and add like fishnets or some cool lace. And like I even made a cool top. I would go to see a lot of shows all the time and I wanted to dress like the people I was seeing on stage or at least yeah. my version of it. So it kind of started that way and then you know kind of fell the way professionally so <laughs> that is so fun you're an abandoned high school rock star <laughs> well I wouldn't call it rock star we played like a total <laughs> of three shows at a local cafe 
And I don't know, we were all a mishmash of different musical interests. So <laughs> the sound was kind of different. So that's so you know, fun, the, though. In the aughts, in the 2000s, you can only imagine like the emo era and <laughs> that sort of thing. So. so is that one like one of the first things you would like have designed and sewed was like your outfits when you were in your, your band? Or do you remember the first thing that you designed and sewed? Yeah. Well, the first thing was when I was a little girl and my Nana helped me out profusely, but it was like a maxi skirt with like a little drawstring. And I remember wearing it to my sixth grade class. And I don't think it was cool at the time. They were probably like, you look like a potato sack. And I was like, <laughs> no, but th I like it. I made it. Don't exactly. hate me. I was just a little shrimpy girl. So I, it was an easy <laughs> target, but um that was like the very first one. And then I had uh, this shirt in high school and it was like this halter cowl neck that had, it was like black with gray polka dots. And then I put like this antique brooch like right in the middle of it. And I remember wearing it to Buzzfest, if anybody around here remembers that and just feeling myself in that yeah. little cowl tank top thing. It sounds so cool. I want one. <laughs> now I wish I had it now. It, it would have been, it's actually a stretchy kind of top. So. Oh, wow. Here we are. Right. And who's taught you to sew? Was it your Nana? Uh, yeah, she kind of showed me how to use a sewing machine, but a lot of the you know, real sewing. So, you know, I, I don't know that I sat still long enough to really like master it as a child, sure. but I did yeah. like a lot of self-taught stuff. Wow. Sure. And what do you love? Sorry, about if the you process? hear snorting, <laughs> that's my pug. Like she's snorting. Oh, in there, so just, that's okay. Yeah. That's, Sorry. It's very, no, we've had, <laughs> I always welcome pets to make their appearance in any form, whether it's snoring or cattail going through the screen. It's all welcome. <laughs> we're going to take a quick break and when we come back we'll have more from our guest terry lynn as she shares what happens when we just breathe relax and let life take us on the ride it has to offer i i don't know like i was just kind of seeing where life would take me i interned for Manuel for a short time. He's the rhinestone wow. cowboy. He designed all the uh, embroidered uh, suits and jackets and whatnot, like like a nudie suit, you know, Manuel yeah. goes hand in hand. Have you noticed more and more people are dropping from social media? They're tired of being blasted by ads, by the nastiness that can be carried on endlessly with comments. Accounts being blocked or deleted for no reason at all. And the reasons for people leaving and spending less time on these platforms continues. If you're only promoting and marketing your business on social media, this is not the best way to navigate your way to a successful business. But don't worry, I have good news. There is a way to reach your target audience. It's by email. Yes, email. Email marketing is not dead. It is alive and well, and deliver a message that will be more reliably received than depending upon an algorithm that continues to change. If you want to know more about how to grow your business with an email marketing strategy, go to girlbosscopywriter.com to find out more. Welcome back to Journey to the Rise. We continue our conversation with Terry Lynn, and she shares the challenges women face with their bodies and the frustration in sizing and figuring out our size when there are so many variables between fits. Yeah. What do you love about the process of sewing? Um, it, I like that I can start with a blank canvas and essentially make whatever I want to. You know, like, I don't know. I guess it just comes a lot easier now. The sewing part is the easiest part. It's the drafting of the patterns and pinning and getting it to look just right. But once you have that finished product exactly the way you want it, it's really satisfying. Like I'll come back down here after I'd finish something. I'll just kind of like admire it. Be like, 
I don't know, just like a little boost of serotonin. Like I made that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So after you graduated college, where did life take you? You know, I go through these phases throughout all of my life where I have these burnout phases and school like really burned me out. And right at that time was the recession. Um, So, you know, some friends were buying houses and snatching them up and that was great. But I was just like, you know what? I want to just cool my heels, work retail, kind of see what's out there. So I used to work at Sunglass Hut. So I was just, you know, selling sunglasses. I thought that, I mean, it was super duper easy, super easy. (laughs) And I liked that it was like a luxury brand where we were selling stuff like Versace and Dolce & Gabbana and, you know, Ferragamos, things like that. But I I don't know, like I was just kind of seeing where life would take me. I interned for Manuel for a short time. He's the rhinestone wow. cowboy. He designed all the uh, embroidered uh, suits and jackets and whatnot, like, like a nudie suit, you know, Manuel yeah. goes hand in hand. So I interned there for a short time. I had some friends that were in film. So we were always doing costuming projects and doing the 48 hour film festival. And, you know, I would jump in and do makeup or um, some small costuming stuff. And then I worked some more retail. I moved out of the corporate retail and worked for some funky boutique in uh, Nashville. And that was really cool because I could wear something besides black and white and (laughs) I could network and do art walks. And that's what I did. And I did some um, made, had some friends that were photographers and we would do photo shoots and, you know, all sorts of stuff and, you know, just ride the struggle bus on out and see what happens. <laughs> and then you ended up with working for a company that had you taking quite a long commute. Is that where you gain more knowledge and experience making patterns? Well, you're probably thinking about ERB and that's, the kind of tail end of the pattern career. Um, After working at the boutique, I got a job working for corporate, making corporate patterns at VF Imageware. Um, It's now called Workwear. And I was making, you know, the patterns for knit shirts and, you know, raglan tees, polos, t-shirts, Henley's, like you name it. And, you know, it was a very in-depth process. And I learned a lot about apparel manufacturing and all the quality, like their quality standards were pretty high. So, you know, I can easily do a fit chart and, you know, measurements and that sort of thing. It was really, really tedious, not glamorous at all. Um, very fast paced and, you know, go, go, go. And, you know, the little guys were just, you know, working ourselves to the bone. But then I um, got laid off in 2020. And so that was like in the right smack dab in the middle of the year. So it was like, well, you know, what can you do? And then I ended up working for ERB where I was just, oh my gosh. Like, I remember talking to you on the phone on those like long commutes. It was once a week for like a day and a half where I would drive to Georgia. It was like four hours away. I'd leave here at 345 in the morning to get there, work half a day. And it was really, it was really different because it was a smaller corporation, but I was like the only pattern maker. And I was way ahead of the game there. Like I got to work on different projects, but like in, at this company, I was like a senior pattern maker. I was like, oh my gosh, I wasn't <laughs> at the other company. Like I was, they didn't treat me like a senior at all. I don't know. It was such a <laughs> weird identity crisis of what a pattern maker is. So, but yeah, I was, I don't know. I was teaching people things at the newer place. So yeah. Wow. So when you're traveling there, like what was, cause then you're on site, like what was your time like spent doing like it, I would think that would be so stressful. Oh, it was, you know, it was stressful because of the people there. Like I was pretty confident with my work, but you know, I don't think they, cause like I was trained to have like very small margins of error. So I was, you know, asking a lot of questions like how, 
many sizes do you want in this shirt? Or how would you like the grade for this? And I guess it was over their heads because they had no idea what I was asking. And they just wanted, you know, even if the quality wasn't good, they were like, I don't care what you do, just do it. And I was just like, okay, not how I operate, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And so what was the motivating factor for you to leave that job and pursue your business full time? Well, that's another little muddy water, too, because at the time I got pregnant with my second child. And at the time, like they understood they did not know that I was pregnant, but I was just like not feeling it. It was not fulfilling. I wasn't going to be able to make that drive for the however long they needed me. So it was kind of a mutual decision. They wanted somewhere, someone more close by to really, you know, get the projects out instead of just once a week. So I was like, bye. It was like, you know, the feeling on the last day of school when you were a yeah. little kid and you're like, school's out for the summer. That's how it <laughs> felt like. And I was just like, bye forever. <laughs> 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 That's so fun. And your your business name is Hella TL. Where does where did you come up with that? I love the name, but where did you come up with that? Well, in college I came up with it because I, you know, I'm a huge um no doubt fan and Gwen Stefani fan and all of these bands from the West Coast. So I'm more of a West Coaster at heart, like I am not a middle Tennessee girly. Um, so everybody out there says, you know, that's hella tight. That's hella, hella cool. And I'm like, I'm hella TL, you know, so that's <laughs> where I got it. <laughs> that's amazing. How fun. Yeah. And when you're working with swimsuit material, it's stretchy, it's shiny. I would, I would think I'm not a seamstress. I have sewn, you know, things and different, you know, items, but I would think it'd be one of the most difficult pieces of material to work with. What are your challenges with that material and what do you enjoy about working with it? Well, I like that I've really mastered the knits because, you know, so many people, like when you mess up, you know, it recovers pretty well, but you cannot rip out the stitches really pretty. It can get snagged on a lot of things like, a lot of times, if you see me like behind the machine, I'll have immaculate nails because if anything is raggedy, it will snag. So I've really mastered the art of ripping out stitches. And I love that you can use uh, special threads and different stitches to kind of give the ease that you want. But also along with um, stretchy fabrics is the negative ease. And this may go over everyone's head that's listening to this, but it's basically, you know, you got to calculate like, you know, a woman's body is so many inches. You don't cut the exact amount. You cut even smaller because one, if it is the exact amount, it would just fall off of your body. So there's a lot of math involved. And <laughs> I don't know why I do what I do, but I do it. <laughs> it makes no sense. It's just do the opposite of what makes sense. So. <laughs> you do it very well. And speaking of fit, you talk, you've talked on your Instagram account about the variances to women's sizes. Now this is extremely frustrating to any woman who has tried on clothes in, in department stores, already online. Can you share with us your insight on the variance of sizes in clothing? Well, there's a, that is a fully loaded question and I could talk all day about that. So not only are, you know, women's bodies shaped differently, but different cultures of women are shaped differently. Like just because you are a 35 year old Filipino woman, you may have the tiniest, tiniest body that doesn't exactly fill out. And it's up to me to, you know, to, determine what the best fit is. So if you order on my website, I ask for measurements because that, you know, that is the indicator of how something is going to fit on you. And, you know, sometimes, gosh, it, that's a hard question to answer <laughs> because some people, you know, they like a lot of butt cheek and, or some 
people like the really high cut V in the front and they don't like, you know, the frontal apron, as some people call it. Um, it just depends on the person's preference, too. Like I could go all day, um, you know, the way a top fits. Some people like a more sportier top, um, but not everything is going to fit the same way. So you just, I don't know. It's it's very <laughs> subjective. Yeah. Yeah. And I noticed on your website, you have great, um, like, graphics on where to measure and you have like wonderful descriptions to help people. Clearly you've, you've taken the time to try to help people get the best measurements possible in the process. Right. Right. And how do you work yeah. with people to help them find the right fit? Well, I do a lot of in-person events. So I'm a control freak and I like to be there measuring the person or, you know, sometimes I'll ask them questions like, what is your typical panty size and where do you buy it from? So I can kind of compare and see what is the best fit for them or what they prefer. So, and also sometimes, you know, people will show me like, oh, I have this obscure swimsuit bottom that fits just perfectly and this is how it looks. And they will show me a comparison and I'm like, you know, that's, that's nice and all, but that is not the same kind of fabric I have. You know, it can be like Spanx material and like, yeah, there's a lot of different things I can look at, but I don't know. It's, at the end of the day, I've got to make some big decisions and trying to hit the target, you know? Yeah. And what is your process when it comes to designing sw swimwear? Well, first I'll get an idea in my head and then I, you know, sometimes I'll reach out to friends or I'll reach out to social media and be like, hey guys, you know, what kind of tops are you feeling or what kind of coverage on the bottoms are you feeling? And from there, I will make a mock-up and I'll, you know, I'll just use myself to make a sample. So most all sample sizes are me size because I'm a real breathing girl. <laughs> and um, from there, I'll, you know, I'll put it on, you know, in the main fabric for the next run. And then, you know, that'll be the next swimsuit. Sometimes it'll go somewhere. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I'll get a customer that likes one of my designs and then completely wants a different cut of it. And then that will end up to be the design, you know, it's just kind of, wow. I'm just throwing it all in one pot there. Wow. And how long does it take to make a swimsuit? Well, it used to take a very long time, like eight hours a day to just, you know, try to get it right. But now I'm just a well-oiled machine and I could make a swimsuit easily in just like a couple hours. What? Sometimes like, you know, if I had it all cut out, I could wow. make the fastest. I've made like four swimsuits in four hours. Like it, like I really <laughs> have a process. Oh my gosh. So, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But with the custom aspect, sometimes it takes a lot longer. Like if I already have your size and know exactly what I'm doing, bam, bam, bam. But if I have to change the pattern or add a little bit, it definitely takes a lot longer than that, but I yeah. can do it pretty fast these days. Dang, girls got skills. <laughs> and when it well, comes old to, machine. Yes, ma'am. And when it comes to working with your clients, is there a common concern that they bring to the table? Everybody has their own um, flaws that they're trying to fix. Everybody has a different, not, not really like, you know, some people just like a, something that fits well and looks good. Um, some moms, like they don't want to be spilling out when they're trying to help their kids or, um, you know, I had a customer this summer. She was awesome. She'd been following me and she had like, you know, she was trying to find a swimsuit that didn't gape at the butt because like her, size per se would fit a certain number, but the body parts just didn't fill it out, if that makes sense. So I yeah. would have to 
um, you know, take it in a little bit here and it wouldn't be like your typical swimsuit. So everybody has a different concern or different need in mind. And like, I'm super good at communicating. So I've been able to help as many people out as I can. Like I'm always there if anybody needed to reach out. That's amazing. And I've noticed throughout your, your Instagram posts and on your website, you don't just focus on like the skinny, skinny girl. Like you cover all body types when it comes to finding women a, a great swimsuit. I try to. I try to be as inclusive as possible. And I'm still learning as a human being, like how to hit all the right targets. Um, but yeah, like I try to be as inclusive as possible. And, you know, whatever anyone is looking for in a swimsuit, I'm happy to try to bend over backwards, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah, you're doing a great job. It's it's empowering to go to something that you are displaying like with your work and it shows the character of who you are because you're like, I'm not just going to showcase impossible figures of zero to two. I want to fit the real woman who wants to be seen and feel beautiful in a swimsuit. Oh, yeah, for sure. And like really the definition of a real woman, like, I mean... It can be, you know, people that have had children that have not had children. Like it is all across the board. You know, some of my best sellers are like in the plus size range. That's amazing. Yes, I love that. And did I see in your Instagram that you can now design your own patterns for your material? Yes. Yes. What is I that process like? Have... Tell me everything. Oh my gosh. So I'm kind of a dinosaur and I like to draw most everything by hand. So like I'll usually just draw it in a sketchbook and then kind of manipulate it digitally and then create a seamless pattern and then I'll ship it or I'll um, order it from my supplier. And um, yeah, I, I it's so cool. I mean, things have changed so much. Like within the past few years. Like I remember reaching out to one company and they didn't quite yet offer what I needed. Like as a one woman show, like, you know, when you order fabric, there are minimums that have to be met. And there is no freaking way that I could afford like 200 yards of fabric. And now I can, you know, do as small of a run as I want to. So it's, wow. it's really cool. And it makes it really unique because I don't have to deal with the licensing and using other people's designs. Like I can 100% do all me now if I wanted to. Oh my gosh. And that's, that's, that's kind of where it's going now. Wow. The, I'm looking at three different designs right here that I haven't had a chance to create the new mock-ups, but you'll be seeing them soon. I can't wait. And you are definitely a one woman show. You had um, a really fun Instagram video that you did. It might have been also on TikTok where you had like said the administrator <laughs> and it was you and the designer and it was you. And it was like, you know, like all these different characters. Everywhere you look. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. And it still is. It still is. So wow. How do you <laughs> I, I wish I had a team here. So one day, one day, how yeah. do you navigate it all with like kiddos and the business? And cause there's a lot to a business because you're doing your own marketing, you're doing your own everything. I don't, I don't like it is just chaos all the time. And you know, kids and family always come first. So I think I'm just like barely pat like this, you know, in 2021 is when I had um, my toddler. And so 2022 was like a light year. I was just, you know, not really doing much. And then I really got my feet wet this past year. Like I showed up and I did, I worked so hard this summer. So Hopefully this upcoming year, I can slowly get my independence back and build up to full time where I'm doing this. Like, cause it's, you know, I'm not just wearing all the hats for my business, but also like for the household. A lot of times I'm just like doling out applesauce and cheese sticks and goldfish <laughs> and dance classes and pajama day at school. Like it's just wild. <laughs> 
Well, however you're doing it, clearly I need to take some lessons from you because you always look amazing in the process. In the chaos, you always look the, the mermaid goddess that you are. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I, like, this is, you know, most of the times I'm like, on, like bun on top of the head. And, you know, if I don't stink, it's free game. I'm good. <laughs> I completely understand. And I noticed lately yep. you, you did a post about, because I've always hand washed my swimsuits. And I was surprised to see you did a post where you talked about people will wash them in washing machines. What kind of tips can you share with people in regards of the care and hand washing their swimsuits? Well, you know, with swimwear, there's a lot of um, elastic and fibers that are stretched and heat simply is just not good for swimsuits. A lot of people use hot water and strong detergents and those can break it down. And if you've ever owned a swimsuit, I know that the swimwear with the elastic, like you'll start to stretch it and you'll hear it crackle. And it's like, oh man, I love that swimsuit. Now like the elastic just breaks and you can't put it on. It just gives that ripply look and you you know, it's just crackled. Um, so that I have swimsuits, like once I started making them myself, like I realized, you know, you can't put them through the dryer, you know, putting them out in the sun will fade them. Like you're already out in the sun and then the salt water and chlorine and the natural oils, everything can just break it down. So if you're taking good care of your swimsuit and then you want to invest in a good swimsuit, like it'll last, you can take care of it and, you know, just rinse it out after wearing it and, you know, use mild soap and lay it flat to dry in the shade instead of throwing it in the dryer. It's really tempting. <laughs> and sometimes swimsuits do end up in the wash. And I saw it this summer, my husband washed a load from vacation and one of my swimsuits was in there. And the luster of the fabric, just like after that, you know, strong detergent in the dryer it just i noticed it i don't know if any anyone else would but i noticed it is a lot faded and yeah you can definitely get longer wear if you take care of it properly absolutely and when it comes to working with someone like you because we go to target right and we have like a gazillion swimsuits that never look good on us <laughs> so we always end up buying three <laughs> What would be the benefit yeah. to working with someone like you versus running to a department store and just getting something that's craptastic? Well, I'm the maker. So you're like cutting out a bunch of middlemen. You're like talking straight to the source. You know, I have some people like the high weight, like they may have a really short torso and they, you know, my high waist just hits them all the way up to the boob. So, you know, talking to me, I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. I'll just trim off a couple of inches or, you know, what's crazy is this summer I had a lot of women that got on the Ozempic craze and they're like, I want this swimsuit now, but I'm going to lose some weight. And they did. And so I was able to, you know, help calculate that and, you know, suck it in a little bit more. And, you know, otherwise, you know, you're just kind of buying one suit that fits all if you're going to Target or one other mass department stores, you know. Mm hmm. And then, I don't know, to me, they never look great, <laughs> no matter how hard you try. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. And what would you say to someone who would, who is like, I would love to have a custom swimsuit. And it's probably going to be like a two part question, but they're saying I can't afford okay. it or I'm not skinny enough or fill in the blank of a body issue concern. Like what would you say to someone who wants a swimsuit, but there's like maybe a limiting belief to why they think they can't. Okay. So the first part of the question, you know, I can't afford it. I think everybody has their own, personal, you know, what they choose to spend their money on. And as a consumer, you know what's important to you. If it's out of your price range, then don't buy it. You know your finances. And most of the time, you know, like when you're, you know, out and about and buying your own swimsuit, you get what you pay for. So, you know, that's up to the consumer. Like if, they, if you don't want to spend that money, then, you know, I'm not you know, you're not my customer and I'm not going to lose any sleep about it. You know, <laughs> like you decide what you're going to spend your money on at the end of the day. Yeah. But 
for someone to say that, you know, I'm not skinny enough or I have a lot of people that ask that or say that. And I just want to say that, like, you know, life is short. Wear the swimsuit. Like, you're going to have to wear a swimsuit anyway if you're going to a water park with your kids or you're going to your girl's trip or what have you. Like, you're going to have to wear a swimsuit. May as well wear one you like, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially when you're talking like I, you can make this adjustment so it fits well. Then all of a sudden you can feel really comfortable in your swimsuit. And we should feel comfortable when we're at the pool. It's That's where we're supposed to relax and unwind and not think about, oh my gosh, my and, belly is showing. Oh my gosh. And you know, I may be the wrong person to talk to about this. Like, you know, I understand like due to genetics, like I'm a petite person, but after having two kids, like... My belly skin is all stretched out and I've got, you know, everybody has cellulite, but I have to get in front of the camera and show off my new designs or have a swimsuit, like, cause I don't always have time to throw together a photo shoot or get the right people together. And I don't know, I guess I have a bit of confidence and I think everyone else should too. And like, I don't care. Like I have breastfed two children and I do not have boobs, but they have been spent. Okay. <laughs> so I am not cute up top and I'm not cute where the baby cave is. And it's not, you know, all this standard of filters and all that. I don't, I don't like to play around with filters a whole lot and editing software. So that's it. That's what you're going to get. And I say, I, I don't know. I feel, I hope that everybody can get to that space where they feel comfortable too because you know life is short have fun you know mm -hmm. and i appreciate you say saying everyone has cellulite because i think we i don't know why we're so everyone opposed does. to yeah we're like so opposed to being real and human it's like but literally everybody yeah. has it everyone has skin texture too like it drives me crazy seeing the photo filters where you can see like, you know, their, their skin, it's skin, there's pores, you know? So like, I think that there's just a lot out there that puts a lot of pressure on people to look a certain way. And I hope that changes soon. Yeah, me too. Like we need to be kinder to ourselves and we need to accept our bodies do so much for us to get through the day, to take care of other people, yeah. kids, you know, be generous to other people. Like, we're 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 in this body that's serving us and yet so many people hate it like why <laughs> i know i know i wish we can all just as a community just lift each other up and not worry about you know everybody has their insecurities at the end of the day so yeah yeah in the past 15 years of making swimsuits what what have you learned over the years that is a lot. Like you just keep <laughs> failing until you don't. Um, it's kind of crazy to think about the patience that I have because like, you know, some days are harder than others and sometimes things go really, really well. And then you think something really big and huge is going to happen and then it doesn't. So I guess you just kind of have to have thick skin and to just kind of, you know, just be easy on yourself. I don't know, like with the, the, but I, when I think about the path that I've gone, like, you know, there's a certain, you know, steps you have to take to do it the right way. And I've just kind of blazed through my own path. <laughs> so I don't really know if it's the right way or the wrong way, but it's my own path. And, you know, I had to speak in front of a class at my old university and, in front of some of the young people that are majoring in apparel design. And it's kind of crazy, all the questions they asked me. And I was like, I don't know if I'm the expert. I have like a sort of um, imposter syndrome in a way. So yeah, there's a lot to learn and a lot to be learned. Wow. And with such an interest in swimsuits, I love your confidence that you display wearing a swimsuit. You clearly have a love for water. Are, do you think you may have been a mermaid in a past life? You know, I think I'm a mermaid currently. <laughs> <laughs> I, a crazy story. 
in 2020, like, you know, everything came crashing down, the pandemic, lost my job, you know, got laid off, all that. And then I came in contact with um, a local mermaid pod. And we went to, I think I told you about this, we went to a mermaid meetup, and I got to wear a mermaid tail. And my first time going underwater, they recorded it. And they're like, I'm underwater, like, there she goes. And I said, you know, watch me drown was my last words. But they, <laughs> I could hear them saying, like, this is her first time. She Look at her go. Oh, my gosh. So I was like, yep, mermaid currently, past life, what have you. I'm a mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You had this quote that I wanted to um, bring up today. And it states, then allow me to offer you some advice take a thousand pictures of yourself now you may think oh i'm too spooky or nobody wants to see these tiny boobies but believe me one day you will look back at those photos with much kinder eyes and say dear god i was a beautiful thing i believe it's by moria rose i may be saying that wrong i think it's obvious moria but rose thank you why, why does this quote resonate with you you know, hearing it from Catherine O'Hara in Schitt's Creek has a different element to it. But, you know, it's kind of a funny thing to hear her say it. But deep down, it's like, hell yeah. Like, you may not have much what you what you think. But like later on down the road, you're like, oh, my gosh, I should have been so much kinder to myself. Look how great I looked. And you know, definitely, I can definitely say that about myself from five years ago, 10 years ago. And I don't know, like I said, I have, I have a lot of confidence. Maybe I shouldn't, but I, yes, you should. I don't know. I think you should just be happy in your own skin. Yeah. Yeah. And you have another, um, a quote that I'm going, I'm going to pull this quote from your Instagram and it says, I'm going to be honest here and share that there have been many, many times that I've thought about quitting. It's difficult. Things take time and it's definitely been one hell of a slow burn. Sometimes once in a while, I will get a message that will absolutely make me cry happy tears. Just like this one from a loyal customer that stated, I hope you know that you are beyond talented and gifted because you, you are something to women that makes them feel like they can slay. I'm just curious. Do you still think about quitting? Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like I have so many different channels going in my head and all at all times, you know, I used to say like, I should start a new career every 10 years. There are so many fascinating careers out there. And, you know, I look, I don't know. I don't think that there's any rules of, you know, staying within one. Um, oh, you're still there. Yeah. I think I lost. Okay. Your picture went away, but yeah. Um, <laughs> staying within the same field, you know, sometimes you'll have really hard weeks or you'll have something that just absolutely does not go your way, or you try really, really, really hard to do something big and then it just flops. So yeah, like when I get low, I get really, really low. So sometimes I'm a lot harder on myself. So yeah, it's just a natural thought process sometimes. Yeah. And I think that happens. Like I think creatives are probably harder on themselves than the average, if you will, person. 100%. There are times where I was, I'm just like, well, why can't I just want to process insurance claims? Or why don't I just want to um, bag groceries or be a teacher or do something more impactful, like in the healthcare field or, you know, something with... Um, you know, charity endeavors. I don't know. Like this doesn't change anybody's life. It's just a swimsuit. No one's <laughs> going to, you know, recall a, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't really see anything about what I do changing the world unless I make it a lot less, um, like a lot more colorful maybe, or, you know, I, I'm not mass producing everything. So maybe a little more greener impact on the world, but yeah. I don't know. I think you're changing the world because I think when you change a person, 
like when a person has like an empowering, confident moment, you're changing something in, internal with them and then they can give that out. And I yeah. think that's like the butterfly effect. And I've seen women on, on posts. Um, I've seen women in person in your suits and how they react. I think you're having a little bit more of a change than maybe you're not aware of or that you're you're able to see. Yeah, and I think everybody has a different way of measuring things, too, but I appreciate that. <laughs> and if there's someone out there who's, like, listening, maybe they're wanting to get into fashion design or maybe even design swimsuits, what kind of advice would you have for them? You know, there's always a million different ways to start somewhere, and the first step is getting started. You know, it's one of the hardest things for some people is just getting out of bed in the morning. So, you know, just put one foot in front of the other, um, you know, find someone you're really inspired by and just kind of watch and see, you know, what they do. And, you know, if they are doing something on a platform and you get inspired, you can do your own version of that. Or, um, you know, we've talked about a lot of different podcasts that we like to listen to, um, it just like really motivates you. Like the, the owner of Spanx or the CEO, she went and called a uh, Nordstrom. I think it was Nordstrom up and just said, uh, hi, I want to buy to you. Like, what do I need to do? And it was so silly. Like she even figured out how to copyright her own design. And, you know, I think that's really cool how she did it. She even like had it on store shelves and would call her friends and be like, go to Nordstrom and buy it. And, you know, she got the numbers. Like there's always so many different paths to making it work or, you know, fake it till you make it. And yeah. there are people like Kim Kardashian that took that idea and just really went with it, you know, and has skimmed. So there's always a different way to go about doing something. You don't have to go by the rules. You can, you know, blaze your own path. I love that. And I do love the woman of Spanx because I believe it was the initial meeting with Nordstrom. She felt she was losing the woman's attention. Like she wasn't quite grasping what yeah. she was selling and took her to the bathroom. She's like, let me show you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. Like you can do your own version of that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I've always, when I heard her tell that story, I think it was with, um, Guy Raz, um, how I built this. Yeah. And I, I thought how incredibly brilliant in the moment to just, it's a Hail Mary, right? Like it's a Hail Mary. Like yeah. I believe yeah. in what I've done and she's not getting it. I need to show her. And she's like, what do I have to lose? Let's go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And it's crazy, though, because in today's atmosphere, everything is just like, go viral, go viral, be a sensation overnight, selling out, you know, running out of room for things, you know, but it's not necessarily the um, dream I have. But, you know, it's always an easy thing to think about, like, what if, but there's mm -hmm. always a different way to go about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's and. Yeah, the the hope is to go viral, but the reality is the hard work and the years that it takes to get to that yeah. point of being able to go viral. And it's never giving up in that process. It's always believing in, in yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you're down in the dungeon with your sewing machine and your snoring pug. Yep. Yep, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And if, if someone wants to know more about you or your swimsuits or they want to get a custom suit or find out more from you about the process, where can they find you? Well, I'm on TikTok and I'm on Instagram. I'm not super, oh gosh, it's so hard to like get in the mindset to keep all the videos and constant content going, but I'm there. I'm there. And um, my website is um, www.hellatl.com. Um, you can direct message me. You can email me. Uh, just go to my website and uh, drop me a line. And, you know, I'm here to answer your questions. That's amazing. I appreciate you taking your time out of your very busy schedule between designing, making suits, being a busy mama, like kicking butt and looking amazing in the process. <laughs> Thank you Thank so much you for, for working here. with me. I know. 
it's it can be kind of crazy sometimes, but we made it work for sure. We made it work. Yes. The mermaid made it happen, and I'm grateful that you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to be here. It was awesome. That's it with Terry Lynn. It's so refreshing to have a woman be on our side. I know for me personally, when I go to pick out a swimsuit, it's really frustrating. The bottoms that are supposed to match with the top, they don't fit. They don't look right. They don't fit my shape. And to know that there's someone out there who really takes the time to customize a suit that makes me feel good and makes her clients feel good, it's just empowering to know that there's someone who wants us to feel comfortable so that when we go on vacation or lay by the pool, we're not self-conscious. We can relax and enjoy the day like we're meant to. In our next episode, we talk with Donovan Bankhead, a man who loves music and found his way from the band room to making a career in the music business. Anyone who's ever gone to college for a music degree will understand this. It's not like any other degree where you can take your classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays and be done by noon or whatever. Music degree is five days, actually six days a week if you're uh, a wind musician because you're in marching band. Um, and it's evenings and it's mornings and it's after. So you've got morning classes, afternoon rehearsals, evening concerts or ball games, Saturday football games. Like you're just, it's a six day a week commitment. Hey, thank you so much for listening to Journey to the Rise. Please do follow us on your podcast app so you have the latest episode downloaded. I would love to have you join us over on Instagram. You can find our account at Journey to the Rise Podcast. This episode was researched, produced, and edited by Girl Boss Productions. And please remember to be kind to yourself. When you're kind to you, it is easier to be kind to others. Because you can't hate yourself into a version you love. You're worth so much more than you think. I'm Lucretia, and you've been listening to Journey to the Rise.